Hi, welcome back to another edition of Lippers Fund Flows Insight. My name is Tom Rosine. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be reporting flows primarily for the conventional fund business. We'll get down to ETFs later on. For the week ended Wednesday, September 25th, I think many people will be surprised that we saw net inflows of about $30.5 billion after having five consecutive weeks of losses for the S&P 500. This is the longest losing streak that it's experienced since December uh, 28th, 2012. So it's been quite some time since we've seen five consecutive down, down days. But we think this is kind of primarily because there has been kind of a sigh of relief as the Federal Reserve uh, Board came back and basically said, you know, they're going to leave quantitative of easing alone. Certainly that was a uh, problem. I think people were very concerned and confused about what's going to happen. That's why we had negative returns. But it's why people kept money going uh, as far as inflows. We saw also President Obama meet with the United Nations and basically uh, commit uh, to finding some sort of peaceful resolution to both Syria and Iran uh, situations. So we think that's maybe what kept people investing over the week. Well, let's take a look actually how the macro groups packed out, uh, panned out as far as flows. We saw equity funds took in just a, in a little bit over $500 million. Taxable bond funds saw about $2.1 billion. The only one that really took a one-two punch, and it really wasn't all that bad, was muni bond funds losing about $200 million. And then we saw money market funds take in a whopping $28 billion in net new money. Well, you know, as we go, go along, we kind of want to take a look at what's going on as far as in the equity group. So let's get a focused uh, group on what happened to equities themselves. We saw about a 1.29% decline again for the week. I told you we had five consecutive down days for the S&P. It didn't relate to all the uh, indices, but certainly uh, for the S&P. It's the first week in four that we've actually seen uh, a, a negative return in this group. You've looked at the right-hand side of this graph, but really uh, it was kind of surprising to, to see that, to also see about $500 million in net new money coming to the coffers, 38th consecutive week that we've seen net inflows. So obviously investors still have their foot on the gas pedal. Year-to-date, we've seen about $144.3 billion in net new money coming to the coffers. However, this is where we've had a little bit of a change in pace. Domestic equity funds, so about $584 million in outflows. This is the first week in three that we've actually seen outflows. And non-domestic equity funds continued on their merry own wake, 17th consecutive week of taking in money. And basically it was $1.1 billion that uh, went into the, uh, the non-domestic equity group. Now this is uh, kind of ironic, but because what we saw was large cap funds, kind of conservative bet, taking about $200 million, while real estate funds actually saw about $400 million in outflows. However, if we get down to the international equity group, we basically saw $1 billion net new money come into it. And of that, only $300 million went into emerging markets. So people were interested in this international equity concept. And the reason is, is I think they're losing confidence in the government here uh, domestically because of the debt ceiling. So we have another new concern. And investors are going, listen, we've had a relief in the uh, in the international arena, and we're having now more turmoil in the US arena. So let's go ahead and put money to work at the international level. This actually carries over into our next group, the equity ETFs. This is the third consecutive week that we've seen inflows, $2.9 billion this time into equity ETFs. Uh, the iShares MSCI Emerging Market, again, a big international group, took in $1.6 billion. But basically what we take a look is we saw some other, I think we saw the Russell in there, you're going to see the Russell 2K is, is uh, you know, up in the top, and also the Japanese funds is up there as well. But if we look at the very bottom, this is where we kind of get it, got it, kind of get interesting. We see SPY. People are, again, frustrated with SPL, SPY only because it's reached new highs. So last Wednesday when Jeff was talking to you guys about it, he reported the SPY hit a new high. People were just concerned that after hitting a new high, people were going to have a letdown, and they did. And um, they took some money off the table. So that certainly was part of that story as well. Well, if we take a look at it, also at the very bottom, uh, it, we saw the financial select group uh, of the spider actually lose money, about $541 million as well. So that kind of completes our ETF wrap up, but it's still kind of an amazing figure. One of the big stories, though, is people still flocked to fixed income funds. And that's where we saw some big moves. For the third consecutive week, we saw you know money go into fixed income funds, $2.1 billion this time. I guess it's not that big, but certainly big considering people have been you know shy of that, uh, of that uh, asset class. We see that uh, for the first week in five, they actually had uh, negative returns, 0.0. So it was nothing to talk about, but certainly, again, why do we see so much new money? Again, I think people voted uh, with the idea that, uh, first of all, they're, they're going to hope that the Fed doesn't do anything next month, but certainly that they're going to hold tight on their quantitative easing. Uh, and uh, you know, hopefully there'll be a quick resolution uh, to the uh, debt ceiling. And if that's true, high yield was the big 
intake of money. $2.3 billion entered that group. That was kind of an amazing feat. Loan participation funds in anticipation of people actually seeing a rise in interest rates. Uh, saw good, good money come in. Nothing like they've been seeing, but about $600 million in net new money coming to their groups. 67th week, by the way, of flows into this group. But if we take a look on the opposite side, we saw that the government mortgages, the government treasuries, all had outflows. So the government mortgage funds lost about $317 million. And then we saw the uh, government and the mortgage funds lose about $309 million. So certainly that was a story to watch. Now, if we take a look at the ETF side of the group, we saw $1.2 billion come into this group. That's a big chunk of money. And we saw that iShares iBox high yield. Again, this is that high yield story, taking about $430 million. And we saw the iShares Spider high yield take in about $240 million. But at the bottom of the barrel here, we see tips and short treasuries. Wow, that's kind of amazing considering we saw about 35 basis point decline from the top at 2.98% on the 10-year treasury to, you know, again, 35 basis point uh, decline. And we still saw people running from treasuries. So there still is that concern that treasuries are not going to be a good place to be and that your interest rate fears are certainly still around the corner. Well, that brings us to another area of interest rate fears, and that's certainly muni bond funds. Muni bond funds uh, actually saw $154 million of uh, net outflows, almost nothing. That can be around. Error. This is the 18th consecutive week, though, that they've seen outflows. But as we can see, things are starting to get better. For the third consecutive week, they saw actual positive returns, 0.67%. We think that some of the pressure is actually easing a bit, and people were just a little bit concerned still this week uh, to play the game. And in fact, as we look, national munis actually were on the plus side, $173 million in net new money. That means single states are the ones that had about oh, 300 plus million dollars in outflows. Certainly, that may mean the uh, the uh, uh, tide is changing uh, for us with this particular uh, run on munis. We'll have to see over the next couple of weeks. Let's turn our attentions now to money market funds. They saw about $28 billion in net new money come into their coffers. This is the second week in three that they've seen inflows. Taxable money market funds saw $28.9 billion. And how it broke out? Institutional funds, uh, $29.1 billion in net new money versus $240 million in outflow on the retail side. This is something we see every quarter. What happens is there's a quarterly funding needs uh, by treasurers and they take and they put their money away and they basically are gonna, you know, fund IRAs or make payable or IRS payments, those type of things. So we'll basically expect to see some outflow from this group eventually as well. Tax exempt money market funds saw just about $900 million in outflows from that group. Well, that brings us to the end of this presentation. And basically, we have our eyes over a couple of things coming up. Obviously, we know that earnings season is just around the corner. That's going to be a very important piece for uh, flows coming into the uh, fall uh, semester as far as uh, far as uh, flows are concerned. And the biggest, I think, the biggest bugaboo I can think of pacing, pacing uh, 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 or having demands on flows is basically the debt ceiling. It's to see what type of gridlock Washington plans on putting this. Will there be some sort of a government stoppage? Uh, if if not, uh, you know, will we have some sort of debt ceiling agreement? And that's certainly going to weigh on how investors uh, react here going in the future. Well, uh, if you if you want to do a deeper dive and uh, check into the areas that I have not covered, you can go to LipperUSFundFlows.com and find uh, maybe some of the areas that you have interest in. If not, you can meet, join us next week where one of the analysts will talk to you about flows. My name is Tom Rosine. I thank you for coming and I wish you the best in your wealth planning and creation.